A zombie with its mouth sewn shut staggered towards them, and a man rushed forward, plunging a knife into the zombie's skull. It was Dory and Naomi, heading to the cabin. Dory commented that this was clearly Teddy's handiwork, as the preservative oozing from the zombie's wounds was Teddy's signature method of killing before the apocalypse. As they journeyed, Naomi learned more about Teddy from Dory. Teddy was a psychologically twisted and abnormal individual, often speaking about destruction and rebirth. Along the way, Naomi noticed the cut on Dolly's hand and grabbed some medical supplies from the shop. Dory mentioned that there were writings on the wall left by John as a child in the room, and Naomi naturally wanted to see. However, as soon as Naomi entered the house, Dory locked her in. Confused, Naomi questioned his intentions. Dory explained that she was his son's wife and the closest thing to family he had left. He couldn't let her take risks, Naomi retorted, asking if he was abandoning her like he did John. Before she could say more, Dory had already left. Dory didn't want Naomi to risk going to the cabin because he knew Hill was dangerous. Meanwhile, Dwight and Sherry were riding horses frantically until Sherry's horse collapsed from exhaustion and had to be shot by Sherry. Dwight felt his wife had changed, becoming unrecognizable. He wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with her. Sherry revealed her inner thoughts. She had no grudge against Virginia or the mysterious group with the spray-painted slogans. Sherry sought out Dwight this time, intending to properly say goodbye. Sherry's experience on the Saviors has been very traumatic. The shadow cast by Negan was too great, and she wanted to say goodbye to Dwight and return to Virginia to confront and eliminate Negan. Otherwise, she felt she would live under his shadow for the rest of her life. Dwight, understanding her turmoil as he had once felt similarly, agreed to help her. He promised to find Naomi first and then assist Sherry in getting a car to return to Virginia. Sherry calmed down and accepted Dwight's proposal. Together, they rode on a single horse towards the cabin and soon reached a bridge strewn with corpses the same place where Dakota had fatally shot John. While they were talking, they heard knocking and shouting from a distance. The source of the noise was Naomi, locked inside the store. Meanwhile, Dory arrived at the cabin he had long feared to return to, now in disarray. Yet many items still remained as they were 30 years ago. Despite appearing calm, his guilt over his son was immense. Even pretending to be indifferent about his son's death, he became alert upon seeing leftover fish in a pot, suspecting Hill might be there. As Dory was inspecting the area, a zombie approached him. He quickly repelled him with his knife, but was met by a bearded man with a gun hill. After Virginia's death, he has been hiding here because the enemies they made before were too many. At that moment the sound of zombies came from behind and Hill's attention was distracted. Dory, though older, used his police training to overpower Hill against a tree. Demanding information about Teddy, Hill claimed to know only that their plan was big, aiming to kill everyone, but no specifics. Dory, sensing he wasn't lying, told him to pack up and leave. Hill noticed Dory's wounded hand and seized it, causing Dory pain and preventing him from shooting. They struggled and fell to the ground, but Dory managed to knock Hill down with a punch. He was about to pick up his pistol when he saw a sight that made him freeze. Dory had forgotten that there was an enemy behind him, because he saw his son's tombstone. Suddenly, a gunshot rang out, and Dory was hit in the abdomen. Hill was ready to shoot again. Dory knows that his son is no longer alive, and when he sees his son's grave, he feels a sharp pain in his heart. His vision started to blur, and the last image he saw was Naomi in two unfamiliar faces. When Dory regained consciousness, his wound had been treated. Thankfully with Naomi, a nurse, present, or he might have died there. Naomi is looking for her letter, and Dwight and Sherry happened to pick up her coat on the way. Luckily, the letter was still inside. They all felt melancholic that John, such a good man, was gone. Naomi decided to face her pain and opened the letter John had left her. Written when he planned to rescue Janice, the letter read, Naomi, this is the hardest decision I've ever made. Please forgive me for leaving you to save an innocent person. This might mean I'll never see you again, but I believe one day you'll forgive me. Just like I forgave, just like I forgave my dad. It took me years to understand why he chose to abandon me to punish a psychopath. I forgive him now. He's a good man who did what he thought was right. He loved me, just like I love you now. I miss the old days at the lodge. When you came into my life, my world lit up. You are the most incredible woman I've ever met. If I die, know that being with you is the most valuable part of my life. <sighs> and a nurse named June was the light guiding my way. I love you, June Bug. Everyone was touched by John's words and Dwight felt sad for his dear friend. After this incident, Dwight found a car for Sherry, 
with enough gas to reach Virginia, but Sherry seemed more pensive, questioning her decision. She reflected on John's father's lifelong hunt for Teddy, which led to years of separation from his family and a wasted life. She doesn't want that to happen to her. Dwight suggested they start life anew together, if she wants to. Inspired by Dory and Naomi, Sherry realized how fortunate she was to have Dwight, her loving partner. In these uncertain times, Naomi returned the wedding rings to them, originally provided by Dwight for their marriage. Dwight had fallen into the abyss, but luckily he met John, and he will always remember the gift of rebirth. Cherish those around you, as the story implies. Finally, Naomi brought Dory back to the dam, heard that this is John's father. Morgan also gave a warm welcome. Without John, Morgan wouldn't be the man he is now. Naomi told Morgan that Dory knew a lot about Teddy's group, the same ones who attacked him and Grace. She suggested they could help each other. Then, Naomi apologized to Morgan. She had let go of her obsessions and hoped for another chance to stay. Morgan, in turn, apologized to her, admitting he had spoken in anger earlier. Dory also shared with Morgan his insights about Teddy's plans, which were almost certainly aimed at destroying everyone in the area. Now, they realized the only way forward was to unite and take down Teddy first. In the prison, a desperate plea echoed from an inmate scheduled for execution that day. Passing a cell, an old man said, Don't fear, George. Just remember, the end is the beginning. You are about to be reborn. The guards were used to the somewhat delusional old man's ramblings, with a smile on his face. This was Teddy, an unexpected serial killer before the apocalypse. Teddy has spent more than 20 years in prison, accompanied only by his mother's photo. Suddenly, an alarm sounded in the prison, and their cell doors automatically opened. There were screams from inside the prison. George, who was to be executed, stumbled into the hallway, his chest covered in blood. This was the early stage of the zombie virus outbreak. Teddy stepped out, saw the rebirth of the dead, and quietly retreated back to his cell. Zombies passed by his door, but other inmates weren't as lucky. A guard who had mocked Teddy turned into a zombie and approached him. Teddy stabbed the guard's head with a pen. Teddy was not afraid. He kept repeating, my theory is right. Just need patience. Only the end is the beginning. Thus, Teddy escaped, spreading his ideology. He made recordings of his thoughts, playing them daily in his house. Since her capture, Alicia had been listening to the broadcasts for several days, with those ideas echoing in her mind, attempting to change her thoughts. Jason visited daily, asking if Alicia was ready to accept Teddy's beliefs. The next day, Alicia sighed deeply, now able to recite the broadcast content by heart. Teddy entered, appearing kind and humorous, a stark contrast to his image as a deranged killer. He told Alicia they had found a new home, everyone packing to leave. He wanted Alicia to promise to commit sincerely to their cause. Stubbornly, Alicia flatly refused. Jason didn't want to waste any more time on Alicia, who he thought was an incapable of grasping the true meaning of the worlds. However, Teddy was very fond of Alicia, seeing Jason go against his wishes. Alicia was dumbfounded by the action. It's a move Teddy learned in prison, and it looks like it works, though Alicia hadn't agreed to join them. Teddy, patient as ever, planned to take her out with him. Jason was confused by Teddy's actions. Teddy explained that he was taking her to handle some personal matters, hoping to get to know each other better. Teddy angrily says stop questioning his decisions. Soon, a bus arrived with a group of new recruits. Young and energetic, the last person to disembark, to Alicia's surprise, was Dakota, who should have been at the dam. Alicia wondered how she had joined this organization. Their meeting was awkward. Teddy learned from their conversation that Dakota had killed Alicia's friend and even wanted to kill her own mother. This piqued Teddy's interest, and he decided to take both Dakota and Alicia out with him. Alicia was reluctant, but she had no say in the matter. So she advised Teddy that if you were smart enough, you wouldn't take Dakota. Jason also advised against taking them, fearing danger. Teddy then took the key off his neck and put it around Jason's neck and told him that if I don't come back tomorrow, you know what to do. They prepared to calm the new members. Seeing no one around, Dakota approached Alicia and said, Things are not what you think. I joined them after hearing you were captured. I've been looking for you. I'm here to help you. Alicia sternly replied, I don't want your help, nor do I need it. Since John's incident, Alicia harbored extreme disdain for Dakota and didn't believe a word she said. Dakota persisted, I found out some information. They have stockpiled a lot of supplies at a certain location, enough to sustain them for several years. This old man is scary but we can find a chance to kill him. 
Alicia firmly told Dakota to stop talking about us, asserting she would never stand with her again. Then, the seemingly benign old man, Teddy, led them on their journey. He didn't reveal the destination, but Alicia distinctly felt that Teddy intended to persuade her during this trip. Half an hour later, they arrived at a mausoleum. Teddy asked Alicia to help him pull out a coffin, and when he opened it, there was a long dead woman. Teddy affectionately addressed the corpse. Hello, mother. At that moment, Teddy seemed childlike. He mentioned that just because his mother was gone, it didn't mean she couldn't be part of the future. Next, they placed the body in the car and continued driving. Alicia, confused, asked if the purpose was just to dig up his mother's body. Teddy explained that all three of them had lost their mothers and hoped they could support him through this tough time. Through conversation, Alicia discovers that although Teddy is kind on the outside, he is very twisted on the inside. He believed his release from prison was a divine opportunity to reshape the world, thinking that only through destruction could rebirth occur. The exact means of this destruction were unclear, but it was evidently related to the key. Alicia had to pretend to pander to Teddy in order to make sense of the situation. Suddenly, the car had a flat tire, and Teddy's mother's body was thrown from the vehicle. Teddy then quickly ran over to his mother's body and hurriedly checked to see if there was anything wrong, but fortunately there was no damage. As they were putting the body back in the car, two zombies emerged from the forest. Alicia, experienced in such matters, advised Teddy not to shoot to avoid attracting more zombies. However, more zombies emerged from the nearby bushes, and the situation appeared to be out of the ordinary. Alicia resorted to using a car tool to fight off the zombies. Dakota grabbed a piece of wood to use as a weapon. Teddy is also locked in a standoff with a zombie. Soon, several zombies were killed one after the other, and they were assisted by a man wearing a hat. Alicia was a little surprised that this man was not a stranger to her, and the man seemed to recognize Alicia. His name was Cole, and they had once lived together in the stadium community established by Madison. When the stadium was overrun by zombies, Madison sacrificed herself to distract all the zombies, giving them a chance to escape. Neither had expected the other to still be alive. Seeing Cole, an old friend, brought Alicia some comfort. Cole expressed gratitude for Alicia's mother, saying, Thank goodness for your mom, or we would have all turned into zombies. Cole warned that their accident wasn't a coincidence and that there were dangerous people on that road. He offered to take them to a nearby auto parts store to find a tire. Out of respect for Alicia, on their way, Dakota curiously engaged in conversation with Teddy gradually realizing their ideologies were strikingly similar. She had killed many people, including John, and faced blame from the damn community, but didn't feel remorse. Seeing it as necessary, Teddy does understand Dakota very well. Cole suggested to Alicia that they could kill Teddy, but Alicia insisted it wasn't the time yet as they still needed to understand his grand plan. Arriving at the auto parts store, they indeed found tires. As Alicia was checking them, she noticed Teddy watching her, confused. She confronted him, and Teddy remarked, You really resemble my mother so much. Alicia was speechless at this comment. Just then, a lot of masked men with guns came through the door, and it turns out Cole was one of them. It was all a scheme. The assailants removed their masks, and to Alicia's shock, most were former residents of the stadium community. Alicia couldn't believe it. Teddy says her mother saved your lives. Cole coldly replied, So what? Maybe she should have let us die. 